Welcome back to Connections with Stacey Levine Lavely. Um, today, I have the honor of an out of town and out of state, really, person who's coming on board. Um, I met her, I want to say, eight or nine years ago at the National Autism Association um, conference. And what that is, it's a conference where they talk about um, some of the alternative therapies and other products um, for people with special needs in general as well as autism specific. It was down in Florida at the Trade Winds Hotel, which is absolutely gorgeous. I totally highly recommend it. The service was fantastic. My view was amazing. Um, so that's something I absolutely um, loved. And I met, uh, her name is Shelly and she is from Buddy Bite. And um, I wanna welcome her to our show. So welcome Shelly. And um, I am so excited to have you here today. This is going to be so awesome. Um, I was so impressed with your bike and I went home and I had a son who just was not into bike riding, no matter how hard I tried. And um, I totally wanted to do it, but he just didn't have the interest. So um, I had mentioned you to many, many people up here in um, the Massachusetts area. And, um, you know, I just want to kind of talk to you a little bit about the bike. So welcome. Great. Well, thank you. I'm. I'm. Um, thank you for inviting me. I'm very happy to be here and to tell you more about the buddy bike. And thank you so much for sharing because, you know, the word of mouth has been our 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 biggest way of promotion. You know, families who see us and love us and tell other families about the bike. So thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. It's it's an amazing concept and what you do is incredible. So um, first off, I just would like to touch base with you. Like, how did you even come up with the concept of a buddy bike and kind of like, what's the history of it? Sure. Well, I can't take credit for that. Um, the buddy bike was actually invented in the early 1990s by Bob Gardner. He lives in Willits, California. And um, Bob had a young son at that time. And Bob was a bicycle enthusiast. He wanted to carry his son to school on a bike, but he didn't like all the options that put the little kids behind him. So he welded two old twins together and created his own type of tandem bike. And he initially called it the love bike. So many years passed and... Um, I work for an estate planning attorney who had a son with autism. And he, like many other families with kids with disabilities or special needs have gone uh, through all the, the baby seat and the things that put the child in the back. And then he tried other tandem bikes and tag alongs. And, you know, he just, he, they were not good for him. He didn't like having Jesse, his son Jesse, uh, riding behind him. So he got a hold of an old love bike and he was like, What is going on with this bike? This is fantastic. We're loving it so much. We want other families to experience this joy. So they went ahead and he bought the patent and a few bikes. And I happened to be his marketing person in the law firm. And he just came to me and said, Hey, I, I got a bike. I'm going to sell a bike. I need a logo. And I almost dropped on the floor because like everything, <laughs> there's no planning or anything. <laughs> I'm like, you just need so much more than a logo. And at the moment I was getting into cycling myself into mountain biking. So it just was like this natural fit. I started running the business and and now uh, we started the business in 2005 and we changed the name to the Buddy Bike. And at the end of last year, we closed down Buddy Bike and split up that business. And I maintained the business I start, and I started a new entity called Bikes for Everybody because my intention is not just to offer the Buddy Bike, but in all these 15, 16 years that I've been doing this, I've learn so much about the, the needs of the, the families that I service and the, the different bikes that are available. I'm well connected to a lot of people in the adaptive cycling community. So my intention is to make that grow and be able to offer a variety of bikes of bikes for people of all ages, sizes, and abilities. That's amazing because inclusion is such a critical piece and something as simple as a bike, um, even though you're like, well, it's just a bike um, for some of these kids, it's it's your entrance into the world to be able to experience the world. And like you were saying, the original um, love bike allowed that child to go to school, but be with the parent and not in the traditional way where they're in a car seat in the back seat. There's really that bonding and things like that, which are really, really important for, um, you know, kids, especially 
especially in our community, but just people in general. So that's absolutely amazing. Um, and, and, um, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and it's wonderful for our little kids who ride the front, but for a lot of families, like with your son, you know, they may never, those kids may never be able to safely ride a bike on their own. And with the buddy bike, they can grow into it. I mean, because we hold 380 pounds, we can ride two adults on the buddy bike. So it's kind of a long-term mm. solution. That's why it never really did well as just a regular family bike, but the families with kids with disabilities get something there that they don't get anywhere else. And, or at least not in, in our price range. Because you know there are a few other options, but their price ranges go a lot higher. So, um, I, and on the buddy bike, I mean, if if somebody if the front rider gets to be you know six feet tall, it can it can be an uncomfortable ride for them. And some of our requirements are that we're safety rated for 380 pounds, and the rear rider needs to be as tall as or taller than the front rider. So people ask me what's the maximum height on the front, and I can't always tell them what it is because I'm like, well, that's that depends on you. If if you're five feet five and your son gets to be six feet, that it's not going right, right. to be a good long term solution. For you. Correct. But but if the parents, you know, in a lot of cases, our parents are taller than their kids, and and they could basically ride the bike indefinitely. So. Absolutely. No, those that's great, great information to know because I mean for me, I know I'm five two and he's probably about five nine or five ten. So um yeah, that probably wouldn't be the greatest thing. So um you need a side by side option then. So, yeah, exactly. Well, that's what you were saying. So that is something that would make more sense is you know, doing that the side I don't know, would you call that tandem or I don't know. Um, <laughs> Tandem is usually back and forth, right? <laughs> well, yeah, but two people is a, it, there's a side-by-side -side tandem, or sometimes they're called sociables. And oh, then, okay. And mine is just an alternative tandem, because on a typical tandem bike, you have a captain in the front seat and a stoker in the back seat. And that stoker is normally looking at the backside of the person in front of them and not, uh, on our bike, we put that person on the front seat and the seats are a little bit lower. So both riders can really enjoy the view, the person in front. I mean, we've even, there's, there was a blind child who had never been on a bike, who rode mm -hmm. on the front of the bike. And even though they can't see what's out in front of them, you know that they feel, they're, they feel like they're driving the bike. They're out and, and the parents were crying and then we start crying. And then it's, like, it's really, it's really a beautiful and different and interactive experience because you're close to each other. And, you know, like on a lot of other bikes, when they're, the kids are on the tag alongs or the baby seats and they're way behind you, you have to turn and look back in the wind and shout at them. But on the buddy bike, you're so close, you're able to just talk right in their ear. So with a lot of kids, like I ride, I ride people of, from little, little kids, as long as they sit up on the bike seat to people, you know, I don't suggest it, but I've ridden with full grown adults that have been taller than I am, that hadn't mm -hmm. been on bikes since they were little kids. So, um, uh, but yes, so anyway, yeah. I <laughs> are you starting to cry? I'm, <laughs> I'm getting this. I was going to say I'm doing a little, a little bit clumped here. Um, oh, yeah, you know, it's just, they can probably feel like with the blind child, they could probably feel the wind on their face and, you know, all those kind of things. And, and it's almost like if you have the person in front of you, it's like you're able to give them a hug throughout the entire ride, which, you know, like I said, normally everybody's in the back seat or, you know, wherever. And this is really, again, it's just so bonding. It's so you know, so intimate in so many different ways, and especially for the parent-child dynamic, um, especially odd, oft, often with autism, especially where sometimes it's, you know, hands-off kind of thing. My kid's a hugger, but a lot of them are very hands-off. They don't want to be hugged and things like that. But if you're doing it in a natural way with the rhythm, you have that motion going, which a lot of kids on the spectrum do like that motion, whether it's vestibular or what have you. Um, again, it's bringing all that in and all that input. And then, you know, like you said, you have the view as opposed to like looking at the backside of the passenger side, you know, um, the little pillow there. Um, they actually can experience that in so many different ways and it just creates even more intimacy more connection things like that with the parents so it's just so exciting I love the difference in the buddy bike and it just like I just it speaks volumes to me for this community especially oh 
and and you know, I get so many phone calls of people uh, telling me their stories, and you know I love listening to everybody's stories, but they tell me their stories as if they're the only ones going through these things, and I'm like, if you only knew, you know, these are the calls I get every week I'm from every family who's tried and tried, and but there's some, you know some families quit riding because they can't take that child anymore or they have multiple kids and they go out and ride with the kids and then what do you do once that, that child can't ride their own bike you don't uh it, if they have a big trike or something they can't keep up with everybody or may not have the strength to to carry their own bike so with the buddy bike man, all of a sudden i used to do an ad that i said uh will you leave him behind or will he lead the ride because now all of a sudden those kids who couldn't ride before, I have families who told me, oh, on Christmas day, it was the first day we all rode our bikes together as a family. And, you know, yeah. yes, every, uh, you know, every time I get those, I start to cry too, so. <laughs> 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 but but it's so true because they do a lot of these families do feel so incredibly isolated and this is just another way for them to be able to experience what just typical families do like they'll go out on a family bike ride and even though they're not on their own separate bike again it's allowing them to just have that regular typical experience that we can go out for a ride we can you know take this bike with us when we go on vacation and still be able to replicate that. It doesn't just have to be in our room. It's not like a stationary bike. Like, cause a lot of times I know, um, you know, he'll do like the stationary bikes in the gym or he's done it through um, occupational therapy or OT. Um, I always like to preface that cause not everybody <laughs> does the, uh, um, the acronyms all the time. So, um, you know, the fact that this can actually follow them and go with them wherever they are, whether it's you doing it, you know, as the parent, or if it, there's a caretaker situation, like you were saying, you know, like you were saying with when they get older and you have the two that are side by side um a lot of our kids you know are going to always have to be at home i mean they're they may not be able to go out into the world and you know make their way and things like that so to have something that that potentially could be calming um you know it, it's a hobby in a way it's also you know physically um you know, a way for them to stay physically fit and things like that. It's just such an incredible thing. So what are some of the other benefits that um, you feel come with the Buddy Bike? Well, we actually have a ratings test that was done many years ago by the National Wekatech Center. If you're aware of them, they rate play products for kids of all abilities. So um, we, we rated highly and everything except uh, they put us a little bit low on physical, but only because you know, that early intervention is really critical and kids need a 25 inch inseam to be able to pedal. So they can ride the bike with our fold out foot pegs, but they can't actively pedal. So they did do a radio, uh, um, they did do a ratings test. That's in my special needs page at the buddybike.com website. And they can take a look at that. I mean, basically all the benefits of anybody riding a bike, combating obesity, improving mobility and circulation, all those things apply. But there are some additional, uh, I always have trouble with the proprioception. It can improve their Pro spatial Propri awareness. Proprioceptive, yeah. <laughs> the stimular and proprioceptive. I'm not the PT, but I, I, I try to learn, but I'm not the PT. But they can look at that ratings test and see. But for me, um, reading the customer comments at our webpage is really what's priceless because you're hearing directly from the families uh, how the bikes are affecting their lives. And there was one family who said they would take their um, son with autism out around the block right before dinner time because it made it he engaged more after riding the bike so hmm. those kind of things are real world experiences and you know real world benefits and not just something done in a, a kind of lab type setting so um yeah we i think uh and besides that the social interaction getting out in the community and i know barry and jesse uh they they still ride jesse started when he was like seven or eight years old and now he's in his 20s and they're still riding their buddy bike and they, they'll do like 20 miles and end up eating at their local bagel place that they love and everybody knows jesse so Jim, he's really he's getting out there in his community where without the buddy bike that might not happen as much 
Absolutely. And that's such an important piece that people start to recognize the kids and um, whether they're kids or whether they're, you know, as they grow into adulthood and things like that, for them to be um, members of the community, because oftentimes it's very hard for them to connect and there aren't always like events or something like that, that they're going to be able to access the community. So being able to um, have something, a vehicle, you know, in this particular case, that is able to allow them to access the community. And as you said, people start to get to know them, they're going to start to watch out for them, know that they're, you know, part of, you know, this community and things like that. And, and that's so important, because it's always great to have as many eyes on our kids, regardless of age, as humanly possible, because, you know, today, the world is a little crazy. And, you know, it, it just probably would give somebody some comfort. And also the fact that if the parent knows the bike's gone, they know often that that particular child, if they know their child well, they're going to know, okay, well, he probably went down to, you know, the hardware store in the middle of town or they went into the bagel place or, you know, what have you. So if there is ever a situation that they're like, oh my God, what's going on? Where did they go? They're going to kind of know in their head, well, the first place to check before I like completely freak out, let me just go down there and check and make sure, um, you know, he didn't just take the bike. Um, So again, I just think it's, it's, again, it's just something that they get comfortable with. And it's just another way, like you said, to access the community and to have community people really kind of watch you know over them um so of course now we get to always add you know pink elephant in the room question so um with a buddy bike um are you comfortable discussing prices and if there are options for you know funding and things like that sure well we were a little bit low on inventory and then covid hit and i was very nervous when covid hit being a small business thinking that was that was it, I was gonna be done. But uh, 2020, there was an unexpected bicycle boom because everybody wanted something to do with their families, something to do at home during the shutdown. So the bicycle industry had a boom. Uh, I did well, not as well as most of the other bike shops, but I did well during that year. So I was able to hang on. So right now I have only one model available and that model, ends up to be about 2,300 by the time you pay shipping and handling a few accessories. And then it is my policy to only ship them to professional bike shops, you pay that bike assembly. So I have that model in stock right now. And uh, I am also working in trade-ins. I've been buying back some old customer bikes and I've gotten some really nice bikes back and been able to move those along to other families at, at reduced rates. So I do have that option. And what I'm working on for the future is uh, our first Made in USA buddy bike. Uh, I'm kind of holding off on talking about who's building it because he's kind of known, he is known in the, in the American bicycle world. So I'm going to hold off and, and on saying anything until <laughs> we're sure we can get all the parts, you know, the supply chain issues have been an issue. So when I do have these new bikes are going to be a, at a substantially higher price. My last model was around 3000, just over 3000 on my high end market. This one is going to be higher than that one. But I do have a list of resources in my website. Over the last 16 years, I have collected information from the families who've gotten funding to buy the Buddy Bike as therapeutic equipment. I would say like 95% of my customers are buying with some, some type of funding, partial or full funding. And I'm always happy to work with those sources. I don't do that on the trade-in models because there's a timing issue and I have other parties involved. But on the new bikes that are in, currently in stock or the new bikes that I will be building, uh, I will be happy to re- work with families on their funding. I'm a provider. It should be listed as a vendor in like Wisconsin. There are a few states. And if they visit the buddybike, buddybike.com and click the website, 
they'll find the funding options page. And I even have a kind of a step-by-step -step on, you know, first you'll get your letter of medical necessity from a doctor or PT, you'll get a quote from me. And, and you really, I really need people to call me and not just pick something out of the website because I always want to make sure that they're getting the right bike model and accessories for their needs. So um, I can help them with a quote then, then they have a clear goal of how much money that they need. And, um, and there are some sample letters in there. And plus I have a document I send to people sometimes uh, if they're applying through insurance, which is private insurance don't does not normally cover it. But as I understand it, sometimes you have to be denied for that in order for other programs to become available. So if they visit our funding options page, they'll find all that information. They can always write to me, Shelly, S-H-E-L-L-E-Y at buddybike.com. And I'll be happy to send, you know, the direct links to make things easy to find for them. So, um, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. So everybody, we are going to drop the link below. If you're watching this on YouTube, it's, um, as she said, buddybike.com. Um, and we'll definitely make sure that we get that in there for you. Um, and Shelly, I just, um, you know, it's funny because whenever anybody, of course, asks pricing and things like that, um, you know, it's always uncomfortable and especially, you know, if it's a higher ticket item and things of that nature. But um, one thing I always like to say, just because it is special needs and it's a little bit different, it's like, you know, putting a wedding in front of something or what have you, um, you know, it, it's an investment. You know, it's not a cost. And I think the most important thing when you're talking about investments is what's it going to cost you if you don't have something? And if you don't have a way of, say, connecting with your child, of being able to get them out physically and things like that. And I think this particular bike um, is such a great option for so many people and especially people who aren't going to be able to ever ride on their own. Um, that's such a huge piece. And I mean, maybe someday they will because they'll gain the kind of strength that they need to be able to actually access um, something like that. But in the meantime, um, you know, the fact that they have funding options, which is phenomenal. If you, you know, can qualify for that, that's fantastic. But also if you can or you just don't want to go through that process, you know, you want Want to think about this this is an investment in something your child can do as a leisure activity it's something you can take away on vacation with you it's something that you know is again going to bond you and your child and make the two of you um, closer in so many ways because you know you're right there with each other um, if it's a child who's just really struggling trying to learn to do a bike it's a great stepping stone into that you know next step um, if it's a child who feels uncomfortable because everybody else is um you know, out there on their bikes and they're the only ones who aren't, um, you know, it, it can just be, you know, an awkward and uncomfortable thing. And I just think the fact that you have these and, and I heard you say something which really amazed me in the middle of all this, you said you build the bikes. And I don't know if I realize that. Oh, so, um, you know, this this is such a great thing. Plus, it's built right here, right in the U.S. by a person, a small business owner, which are the people who have been affected the most by this pandemic, who desperately need, you know, your support and your help. So tell me about the uh, bike building process. That sounds so okay. cool. Well, I can't take credit for that either. I don't build the bikes. I'm not a bike mechanic. I, I just have a really great village, you know, that, that supports me and helps me with everything. Okay. I do. Um, up to, you know, like I said, Bob Gardner developed the bike and over the years with every inventory, we're always trying to improve. So because I'm in contact with families who give me the feedback about the bike and the bike shops and the, and, and the people in the industry, I've been able, I mean, the last version we built was in 2017. And I think that was just, uh, this was our best model to date. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, I'm kind of back at square one, rebuilding since that, that factory we used shut down entirely. So we've always built our bikes overseas. 
And another part of the pricing is, you know, we're only building like 100 to 150 bikes at a time. So we're not in the Walmart numbers building thousands of bikes at a time. Mm -hmm. Most people in the adaptive bicycle world, they're either building their own or they're importing numbers. They're just not that great. And, and it costs us a lot more to build those bikes. So the first, this, I am exploring this first made in the USA bike um, because, because of the limit limitations overseas. I'm not able to go back there anyways, but there have been families who've wanted it. My concern has always been that it is going to push the price up to a much higher price range. And I've always tried to keep the buddy bike at a level that's below all the other options, more, mm -hmm. more affordable more attainable. So I'm facing a lot of challenges now. I'm always trying to keep the family's needs in mind and, and give them the best possible price. I mean, the bike that's come out, is going to be a quality bike. And all of our bikes have been quality bikes. We put quality parts and especially our sport models. We add a few extra features. So, I mean, now, now we're giving, um, families with kids with disabilities, not just a functional therapeutic bike, but a bike that looks cool and a bike that makes them makes the kids feel like they belong with everybody else and keep up with everybody else. So I am going to keep working at it. And, and uh, <laughs> I don't build them myself. Other people do the physical labor of putting them together. But I do, um, based on the information I receive from everybody, I do contribute a lot to the um, to the improvements of the bike and the changes and adding on the features and so forth. So um, and you you basically are the project manager. I mean, you're the one who puts it all together. You're the one who gets the feedback because without knowing what that feedback is, the people who physically are putting them together aren't going to know what needs to be tweaked, what needs to be changed. And if you're making it for a certain person with a certain disability, um, what that's going to look like. So you are at the end of the day, you know, the queen of the bikes, I guess you could call it. Well, thank you, Shelly, thank you so, so much. This has been so great and so enlightening. And I'm so excited for everybody to check out your website, get to know you, get to know the bikes and, you know, be able to kind of move forward with this and, you know, support local, and, um, you know, make sure we're keeping people, you know, giving people jobs, making sure they keep roofs over their head and food on their table. It's the most important thing. And you're a big piece of that, because even though you say you don't build it, you're building a community around it and you're supporting them so that they're able to take care of their own family. So that's huge. So thank you, Shelly, so, so much for visiting with me today. I really appreciate it. I would like to add one more thing because I, yeah. I really want to tell people, you know, the website buddybike.com, they can get all the information there, but I want people to feel comfortable calling me because I'm telling you, I have a lot of information to share and, and especially based on which state you're in, maybe I know something about that state and, and other ways to get funding or groups that are in that state. So I, I am not a salesperson. I don't push my bike on you, uh, but, but I do love to talk to each family i get to know all my customers so i hope you, people don't feel intimidating and if they want information about the bike just give me a call i'm happy to talk to anybody about their specific needs and to help them decide if it's really a good choice or sometimes i'm able to suggest like i told you a side by side or mm -hmm. you know, some other option that would that would still provide them you know the freedom of, of riding a bike Absolutely. And and that's so generous of you to take your time because that's one thing you can never get back is time. And the fact you're willing to donate more to this to this cause and to the families, we greatly, greatly appreciate all you're doing. So again, thank you so much for coming on Connections today and hanging out with me for a little while. And um, hopefully we'll be able to reconnect a little bit later on as you get more info about this new collaboration. I can't wait to hear about it. So thank you again so much for being Thank here. You for, thank you for inviting me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Oh, me too. Thank you so much. So until next time, everyone, keep unity in the community and have a great day.